I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and this is Amazon's first smartphone. Let's unbox it and see if it gets us fired up. Our demo Fire Phone comes to us from AT&T, but it's clearly Amazon which has provided the packaging here. And this is a phone you'll want to unbox yourself. Don't let the store rep do it for you. From the beautifully textured outside sleeve to the striking black and red box itself, this is very high-end packaging through and through. That continues with the included literature, limited to just a pair of get-to-know-you cards, and some very lovely cardboard cladding around the included accessories, a USB cable, a power adapter, and some very space-age looking headphones. No warranty booklets, no rebate cards, no extraneous stuff whatsoever. The Fire Phone delivers a great first impression. Coming to the device itself, once we strip away the protective plastic envelope, we get a device that feels familiar, very similar to the LG Nexus 4 in look and feel. In terms of size, it hews very close to the middle of the road, most closely resembling a device from another manufacturer whose name starts with A. The Fire Phone is already starting to collect fingerprints barely a few minutes after the unboxing, and the cameras that enable its fun dynamic perspective are very visible in certain light. But our first impression is that the phone is comfortable to hold, with a display that's big enough without seeming overwhelming, and a logical layout. The power standby key is up top next to one speaker and the headphone jack. There's a USB port and another pair of speaker grills down below. And on the left side is the volume rocker, the SIM tray, and the camera and Firefly key. Powering up the device for the first time, Amazon's unique dynamic perspective is the very first thing you notice. It's refreshing that it doesn't need any sort of initial setup or learning phase. It just pinpoints the position of your face with the four front-facing cameras, and then the screen does its funky 3D thing. The interface is new and unconventional enough to trip us up a few times. We get a welcome message from AT&T, and it takes us a second to figure out how to get back to the home screen, despite that pronounced home button down below. We've become spoiled by Android and Windows Phone's persistent back key, which isn't present here. But a quick jaunt through the Fire Phone tutorial reminds us that the back action is just an upswipe away, and we get comfortable with the interface fairly quickly. Setting up our Google account to play nicely is as easy as on any smartphone, and digging into those inboxes is approximately 40 times more fun on the Fire Phone, thanks to the flick to open side panels. Combined with the tilt to scroll in the browser and a number of other UI quirks, we think this device is sacrificing function for form quite a bit, but we're also really thankful to be dealing with a refreshing new interface here. And we're very much looking forward to giving the Amazon Fire Phone a proper review. Now, if you don't want to wait for that, Join us for episode 106 of the Pocket Now Weekly, airing July 25th at 2 p.m. Eastern, and we'll answer your Fire Phone questions live on the air. In the meantime, be sure to follow Pocket Now on social media, subscribe here on YouTube, bookmark pocketnow.com, and be sure to let us know what questions you'd like answered in the full review. Leave a comment after clicking the like button below. Until next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you very soon. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and this. <laughs> Let's get fired up and unbox it. Let's just unbox it. This is a stupid joke. Roll the music. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and this is Amazon's first fart phone. <laughs> oh. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and this is Amazon's first smartphone. Let's unbox it and see if it gets us fired up.